Chapter 8 Bonds, Connections for the Benefit of Another So, greetings everyone. This is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 99 of my Let's Play of Amayui Castlemeister. So, now that we've gotten through the Thunderhead Sea where the dragons lived, we're finally enter entering into the Holy Land proper. This region called Fara Leo Leauros is a rather large settlement that in fact a settlement so large we haven't seen it before here and there there are worshippers houses or dwellings but we don't actually see very many people hmm, okay then and we're finally getting close to the God's Haze It seems far away when you look at it, but it's gotten a hell of a lot bigger since before. I've always thinking to myself that you can't see what's inside of it. It's some kind of mountain that looks like it's piercing the heavens, but thanks to the clouds and the wind, a kind of natural sight barrier, yeah, you can't see inside. And now we're going to wonder what the hell is up with that. Well, Avaro doesn't know. But if we continue this way and enter into it, it'll probably be dangerous. The more you get close, the more we understand that the winds there are excessively violent. And intruders will have a hard time with it. Mikio thinks it's amazing and wonders if there isn't some kind of barrier. Well, that is a mage type of observation, isn't it? Well, when we say barrier, we mean a magical one. They have a word for, for it in Japanese that it literally means some kind of magic thing. But anyway. A bearer, huh? It's a pretty big area, but it could be possible that they've been able to erect one. So we're thinking that it's possible that the clouds and winds are actually a form of magic barrier. Since it's kind of clear that it's not natural. So uh, we wonder who it could possibly be. <laughs> anyway, as to its nature, I've always heard rumors that if you enter into it, you'll get lost to such an extent that you won't be able to return. Probably if you get in there, your sight triangle, sight triangle, line of sight will get bad and you'll immediately be unable to tell what's right in front of you. Well, entering in there in any case, on foot or even in a carriage is simply suicide. It's true that just trying to get in there seems like you'd be putting your life on the line. Yeah, and further, and even before that, the dragons and the elves both forbid entry into it. Hmm. 
But if we're in the castle, Rosaline's thinking maybe it could withstand it. Navarro wants to think that they'd be able to get through. Here we can ask Mikshuana whether she was able to confirm what was up with that. And now, it was forbidden even for her to get close. So she has not been able to directly confirm anything about it. Okay, I've always wondering if there might be anybody who's actually been in there. So, are we really going? Yeah. But we can't go in there just yet. If there is a barrier, then if we do enter in, we'd probably best dispel the barrier first. So we better do our research. Otherwise it'll be dangerous. Now the castle might be able to get in and we can do our sightseeing that way. But if it is impossible, it would be a bad idea. Everybody seems to be in line with this particular opinion. So they're nodding and such. So, our path of attack is the usual, isn't it? Yes, as usual, we start by gathering information. Now that we've gotten this close, we should be able to find someone who is more deeply knowledgeable about the God's Haze. Yeah, furthermore, here in Farolearos, we should be able to find the head priest of the Hyushia faith. No matter how we try to get in there, we'll probably won't, won't be able to avoid meeting them. <coughs> and if possible, we should at least say our greetings to him. And see if we can learn anything about the castle itself or the God's Haze. And though it's a long shot, maybe we can actually get permission to enter from him. Since they're watching over the entrance, or lack of entrance, to the holy ground, there's the possibility that he knows some more details is pretty high. And come to think of it, Raul Russo's people also are in large part followers of the Fuchsia faith. So Avaro asks Rishu if she's ever met the head priest. Well, they've done as much as greeting each other. But as far as sitting down and having a conversation, she's never had the opportunity. So the high priest, Kudavans, is famous for hating humans. Although, if you say famous, that's at least among the humans that are in any place to actually meet him. Yeah, <laughs> human hater, huh? So, Kalmeg told us that the Guadalcuna Castle was made by those humans that fought Paraya long ago. And 
used as a weapon, sealing gods inside of it and such. So if Coup de Vance knows about that, it kind of makes sense that he might hate all humans. Or something. Still kind of bigoted if you ask me. Alright, Mikshuana. You met him in connection to with your mission before already, right? Yes. Well, yes. He happens to have a very strict and harsh personality. He keeps his thoughts to himself so he's hard to read. And he won't open up and gives the impression that he won't be easily to, to win over. But while they were talking, and just once, he had a reaction, or rather a... I wish I could say how, that the first one is a soft reaction description, but she rephrases herself to say a violent reaction. Anyway, he made one reaction in that way. So what was it? It was when she asks for asked for permission to investigate the Holy Land. Is that so? So he's very careful to make sure that what he's thinking is not readable to his people, but only in that he reacted. So that's how much he doesn't want anybody going into the God's Haze. Well, in any case, our destination is unchanged. No matter what our partner, <laughs> our opposing force thinks, let's go meet him and try our best to respond to what he throws at us. And our enemies are getting stronger the further we go. This time we don't want to push unreasonably. So let's prepare ourselves with uh, equipment and take requests and things. And little by little build up power for Fia. Yeah, we need to prepare the castle and everything for this stuff. Having gotten this far and calling it Fia's power, we did learn that it was something that was planted on her and such, but even knowing that, we had best put it to good use. <laughs> After all, it kind of steals Fia's faith and weakens her. So we're taking care for Fia in not pushing her forward too fast. Although she is trying to take care of us and not show it as well. Well, she thanks Avara for being so considerate and says yes, she'll rest a bit, rest the castle a bit, I suppose she means. Yeah, let's take it easy for a bit. And we best make connections with people. If we don't, then the castle won't move anyway. So, Fia smiles, but she's a little bit worried, mixed in with that smile. Yeah. 
So next up, we're meeting the elves, she says. She wonders if, again, we'll end up in a fight like we did with the dragons. Well, as much as possible, we have to try our best so that doesn't happen. At the very least, we aren't going to be the ones to start the fight. That's how we do things, after all. Yep. So, it's not necessary to force ourselves too fast. And, according to rumors, there are actually some valuable places around here. So we should check them out for materials and such, if we have the time. So, let's get prepared to go head towards the Elves' village. And this is the map, then. In the Thunderhead Sea area, there's a new place to see stuff. And this is where it tells us what to do. Make new things and level up your characters and improve their growth and things like that. So, the fact of the matter is, thanks to everything I've done so far, I already have enough discoveries and character growth that the next scene is going to follow right after this one. But it's going to be an even longer scene than the previous ones, so I'm going to have to cut out here, and thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.